This video is a guide made for every type of player, going from someone who just picked up the game and wants to know a little more, to someone who has hundreds of hours of playtime, like myself. For that to work properly, the video will be divided into 8 parts, each focusing on different but related topics. If you want to skip around to any specific part of the video, the timestamps are in the description and on the video's timeline. For example, if you're interested in skipping the basics and seeing which animal made the most money, you can skip straight to the experiment that it made, to see how it went. And the same goes for the other parts of the video. Well, I hope you enjoy! Part 2. The Basics In Stardew Valley, there are 5 different species of barn animals and 6 different coop animals. That is, including the 3 types of chicken. When you build either a coop or a barn and upgrade it afterwards, you'll unlock new animals for that building. With a regular coop, you'll be able to raise only normal chicken. With a big coop, you'll be able to raise every type of chicken, ducks and dinosaurs. And with a deluxe coop, you'll be able to raise every animal that I listed so far, plus rabbits. Now, when it comes to the barn, the same logic applies. On its first level, you'll be able to raise cows and ostriches. With a big barn, you'll be able to also raise sheep. And with a deluxe barn, you'll also be able to raise goats and pigs. With each upgrade to either the coop or the barn, their capacity is going to be increased by 4 animals per upgrade, going from 4 at the beginning to 12 on the last one. You cannot build a big coop or a deluxe coop from the ground up. You should first build a regular coop to then upgrade it. And the same goes for barns. Here's a combined price for a fully upgraded barn and a price for a fully upgraded coop. There are a lot of items and buildings that can help you in raising animals including an autograbber that collects the items your animals produce, a heater to keep your animals warm and happy during the winter, and an incubator to hatch the eggs your animals lay, and by the way, incubators are inside big and deluxe coops by default. When winter rolls around, you need to have enough hay to feed your animals every day, because if you don't, they'll lose friendship points for every day that they're not fed. To store hay, you can build silos, so that the grass that you cut with a scythe has a 50% chance of being turned into hay. It's usually a good idea to wait until you have a silo to start cutting the grass on your farm, because you can build a silo early on, since it's pretty cheap. Each silo stores up to 240 pieces of hay, and once your silo is full, you can just take some of the hay out manually, through a coop or a barn, and store the hay in a chest, until you need it. Just keep in mind that the grass dies in winter, so you should always try to cut and store as much of it as possible before everything dies. With some notable exceptions, your animals can produce items of varying qualities. Those qualities are normal, silver quality, which makes the items be around 20% more valuable than the normal quality ones. Gold quality, which usually adds around 50% of the normal quality item price and iridium quality, which are worth twice as much as the normal quality items. Regardless of the type of animals you choose to raise in your farm, something that can make a substantial difference in how much money you're going to make in the long run is making your animals happy, because happier animals have a higher chance of producing high quality items. How an animal's happiness works will be covered in a few minutes, because there's a lot to it. But if you just want to know the basics, just remember to feed and pet your animals every day, and soon enough they reach maximum happiness. Part 3. Which animal makes the most money? Now that we've covered the basics, let's find out which animal is the most profitable. For that, I've conducted an experiment. I've built one coop or barn for each type of animal. Each coop or barn has 12 animals of the same species. I'll let the days roll to see which animal made the most money in a month, going from the first of summer to the first of fall. I didn't use any perks slash professions, and I didn't process any of the items the animals made, but if we do get close results, I'll use whatever perks would be the best for each animal, so that we can decide which animal is the most profitable. It's worth saying that I maxed out the happiness status of every animal before the experiment began, before I show the results, if you want to try to guess what animal made the most money, now is the time. So starting from the bottom up, here we have the results. We have the dinosaurs in last place, then we have white chicken, rabbits, ducks, ostriches and normal chicken. After a big gap, sheep, goats and cows. And after an even bigger gap, we have in second place the golden chicken and in first place the pigs. 
The difference between them is actually quite small. It's less than 4,000 golds, or around 1.3% of the amount of money the pigs made in total. So at the end of the experiment, because the difference was so small, I decided to make some tests using the values we got. I not only picked the best perks for each animal, but when it was profitable, I processed the stuff that they gave me, and the final results were surprising I'd say. For the golden chicken, I picked the artisan pork, which made it so that the mayonnaise was worth 40% more. I turned every egg into mayonnaise and sold them. Each egg produces 3 gold quality mayonnaise, which are worth 399 gold each. Since we had 348 eggs, we ended up with a total of 416,556 gold. Now, the pigs were a little more complicated. I picked the rancher perk on the farming skill for that 40% money bonus for the truffle, and I picked the gatherer and botanist perks on the foraging skill. Because for some reason truffles are considered as forageables by the game, meaning that the gatherer perk made me find more truffles, 20% more to be exact. And the botanist perk made it so that every truffle was always iridium quality, although I turned all of them into truffle oil, meaning that the quality of the truffles didn't really matter. But well, I thought I should include that information for transparency's sake, and it's generally good to have that in mind if you want to raise pigs on your farm. With that, we originally had 435 truffles. With the gatherer perk, we would have picked up around 87 extra truffles, adding up to a total of 522 truffles. Since every bottle of truffle oil is worth 1491 golds, with the artisan perk, we would have ended up with 778,302 gold. And by the way, choosing the rancher perk wouldn't have changed the price of the truffles themselves, since, like I said before, truffles are considered to be forgeables, so they wouldn't benefit from the 20% bonus, although the truffle oil would. We also need to factor in how much money the animals are going to make throughout the whole year. Since the pigs won't come out of their barns during winter to find truffles, while the golden chicken will lay eggs during winter like always. So, going off of the numbers we got, we can see that, on average, the pigs would have made around 2,334,906 gold in a year. Meanwhile, the golden chicken would have made 1,666,204 gold. So, in the end, the pigs still would have made an extra 668,682 gold, when compared to the golden chicken. In conclusion, the pigs made much, much more money, no doubt about it. And when you consider that to unlock the golden chicken you need to first 100% the gain, we can see that they're not really worth the hassle aside from the novelty. Also, looking at the results we can see that, generally, the barn animals make much more money than the coop animals, with the exceptions being the ostrich and the golden chicken. Hey, I just want to ask you to consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel, because it helps me so much. Thanks for watching! Part 4. When should I buy a coop or a barn? Something that new players often struggle with is knowing when to start worrying about animals. So when should you? Short answer, either when you're rich or when you feel like it. Long answer, there isn't really an objective way of answering that. A lot of people like to buy their animals around late fall or early winter, since you have plenty of money and especially free time on winter, since you can only plant winter forageables outside, which are not worth a crazy amount of money. And if you buy one of every animal around that, you'll be able to get every type of animal product in the first of spring for the community center. Now, another popular strategy that focuses on making as much money as possible is to start worrying about animals only when you have the resources to build, upgrade and fill a barn with pigs, since, as we determined before, pigs are by far the most profitable animal in the game. Now, what I usually like to do, unless I'm playing with a certain goal or challenge in mind, is buying the animals when I feel like it. Trying to make a farm as efficient as possible is fun, but just not having to worry about money 24-7 and doing whatever I want, when I want, is a lot more fun if you ask me. So yeah, in conclusion, there isn't really an objective answer to that, since it heavily depends on your playstyle and goals. Part 5. Advanced and General Tips this section is going to be a compilation of some pieces of advice that I couldn't fit in shorter parts of the video, including 11 minute segments that I had to cut from the video for pacing reasons. So enjoy! 
Here's a little table that I made to help you know when you should process the items your animals give, depending on your perks and whatnot. The stars represent the quality of the item, being that the white and black one represents the normal quality. If a star is inside one of those boxes, it means that you should process the items of that quality. For example, let's say you want to know when to process your small goat milk. We can see that it's on the second tier. With that, we can also see that if you don't have any profession that changes the price of animal goods, or the rancher profession in this case, you shouldn't process the iridium quality version of your small goat milk. But you should turn normal, silver and gold quality goat milk into cheese. But if you do have the artisan profession, you should process every quality of small goat milk. And so on for the other items. Way to farm XP is using animals. When you pet an animal, you get 5 XP on the farming skill. I know that it doesn't sound like much, but if you pet 12 animals every day, that is, a full barn or a coop, on any given day, you'll make 60 XP, which can really make a difference over time. So, in a year, you'd make 6720 XP from one full barn or coop, which would be enough to make you go from level 0 to almost level 8, just for petting the animals. There is a late game item called Auto Petter. You can either get lucky and find one on a treasure floor in the school cavern, which is a mid game dungeon in the desert, or you can buy one from Joja if you've completed their expansion program. It'll simply pet the animals automatically for you. They won't gain as many friendship and mood points as if you were to pet them manually, but you still can pet them while also using the auto petter, which makes them gain more points. After you place one inside the Cooper Born, when you pet an animal from that building, you see a smiley face when you interact with the animal. There is also a trick to avoid running out of grass for your animals. If you place a fence above a tile with grass, your animals won't be able to eat the grass under the fence, but that piece of grass will be able to spread to the adjacent tiles. And if you have a lot of tiles with this setup, it'll take a long time for you to run out of grass. If you want to build a fence in the space around your coops and barns, you don't necessarily have to use fences on every tile to do so. You can use chests or crafting stations instead of using only fences and gates, since neither of those items decay and break, unlike fences and gates. Different types of fences decay at different rates, so if you have enough hardwood, just use it to make the fences in the spots you can't use other placeable items. Cats and dogs have a hidden friendship status that can be increased by petting them and filling their bowl. There isn't really a way to lose friendship points with your cat or dog, and that includes shooting it with a slingshot. The kicker here is that having a dog or a cat with a max friendship status or a thousand points gives you a point in Grandpa's evaluation, which is an event that happens at the end of year 3, where Grandpa might give you a very useful item, depending on how much you've accomplished with your farm so far. Now, the horse is a little more useful than the cat and the dog. It'll give you a 30% speed bonus, which is applied over other speed modifiers. So, for example, if you drink a cup of coffee, which gives you a small speed bonus, then ride your horse, the speed bonus from the coffee is going to be applied to your horse. You can unlock the horse by purchasing a stable on Robins, being that the horse comes with the stable. If you forget your horse somewhere outside the farm, it'll come back to the stable overnight. You can also summon your horse pretty much anywhere outdoors if you have a horse flute. Like I said in chapter 4, animals don't make as much money as the best crops do, so don't expect them to. Animals aren't supposed to be an alternative to crops, but more of an extra. They're fun, reliable and can be relatively low maintenance, but they probably shouldn't be our main way of making money. And perhaps one of the most important pieces of advice not only for raising animals but for playing Stardew Valley as a whole, you should always try to plan ahead when doing something in the game. Let's say that you're going to raise pigs, for example. If so, are you going to craft enough oil makers for all the truffles that you're going to find? If you want to, it's not likely that you just have the materials to build so many oil makers laying around in your farm. At least, not enough if you're planning on crafting a big number of oil makers. Again, there are a lot of ways of playing the game, and you don't necessarily have to be efficient 24-7. But generally speaking, if you have an idea of what you're going to focus on next, and you prepare for that, your life is going to be much, much easier. Part 6. Friendship, Moods and Item Quality 
Regardless of the type of animals you choose to raise in your farm, something that can make a substantial difference in how much money you make in the long run is understanding what makes the animals produce better items. There are two parameters that determine the quality and type of items an animal can produce. Those are the animal's happiness and its mood. An animal's happiness varies from 0 to 1000 points. The happier an animal is, the higher the chances of them producing good quality stuff is. Petting an animal increases your happiness by 15 points, if you don't have any perks. The Shepherd and Coop Master perks double the amount of friendship points that you get when petting the type of animal your perk applies to. Shearing or milking gives 5 points, and letting an animal eat grass gives them 8 points. You can also lose points if you don't feed the animal on any given day or if you lock it outside during the night, it'll lose 20 points. They also lose friendship points if you don't pet them on any given day. The amount of friendship points that they lose is calculated by this formula. So basically, the higher friendship with the animal that you didn't pet, the less friendship points you lose with that animal. Now, the mood is a little different. Along with friendship, the mood determines the quality of the items the animal is going to produce, and if the animal can produce more than one item, like the rabbits and ducks. Mood varies from 0 to 255. You can check an animal's mood by clicking on it after petting it. Each message in that menu will give us a hint about the animal's mood. You can max out an animal's mood by letting it eat grass outside. You can also pet the animals, feed them inside the living space, use a heater in winter or, oddly enough, let them outside between 6 and 7 pm to increase their mood. But if you don't feed the animals, if you don't pet them or if you leave them outside either overnight, during the rain or during winter, their mood is going to decrease. Now that we know how each of those indexes work, we can understand how they change the quality of the items your animals produce. Most of the formulas the game uses to determine the quality of the items produced by the animals have friendship and moods in them. For example, the item quality formula is as follows. Basically, as high as your friendship and moods indexes are, the higher the chances of your animals producing good quality items. But how is it formally used? Well, to see if the quality of the item produced is iridium, the game checks whether or not the score you got using the formula we talked about was equal or greater than 0.95. If it was, the game would divide that number by 2 and then generate a random number, ranging from 0 to 1. If the generated number is higher than the one that came out of the equation above, divided by 2, the item will be iridium quality. If it isn't, the game will do a very similar procedure to see if the quality of the item produced was gold, and so on for the other qualities. I think that it's worth mentioning that if your mood and friendship with an animal are maxed, the original equation will give us the number 17 over 15, or 1.3 recurring. However, that doesn't mean that you always get iridium quality items, as my experiment showed us. Since the number you get still gets divided by 2 and then compared to a random number between 0 and 1, you still have a chance of getting items of different qualities. But overall, if your perks do not change those odds, your chances of getting an iridium quality item from an animal with max happiness and max moods end up at 17 over 30, or 0.56 recurring. I couldn't really find a lot of information about this outside of the wiki, so it almost single-handedly made this section of the video possible. Thank you very much, people who contribute to the wiki. Part 7. The Slime Hutch Although slimes aren't really farm animals, I thought I should cover them briefly. The slime hutch can be built by Robin, and it can house up to 20 slimes. Once you have built one in your farm, there is a 1% chance that any slimes you slay drop an egg that can be either sold or hatched. Once you have at least 5 slimes, they'll start producing slime balls that, when right-clicked, drop around 15 slime. You can put 100 slime in a slime press to make one of 4 types of slime eggs, each with the following chances of being generated, regardless of the types of slimes you currently have in your slime hutch. To produce slime balls, the slimes need the troughs in the right side of the slime hutch to be full of water, and you can use sprinklers to fill them. Now, the slimes don't need to be able to touch the troughs to produce the slime balls, they just need the troughs to be full. Since the slimes will try to hurt you, you can build a fence around them so they won't annoy you while you come and get the slime balls they produce. 
You can also put some kind of floor in the spaces your slimes stay, so that the slime balls will spawn outside of the reach of your slimes. You can also use the slime ring, which makes the slime deal no damage to your character. But to me, fencing off the slimes is a little more convenient, since you only need to keep changing your rings every time once you go into slime hutch. And once you have 20 slimes, you won't need to have contact with them directly anymore. Just like the coop, there is a 1% chance that a witch will fly over your slime hutch on any given night and turn your slimes black, unless you have a wicked statue inside. Your primary way of making money on the slime hutch is selling the slime eggs you can make using the slime presses and the occasional petrified slime that has a chance of spawning when you break a slime ball. On average, I made 60.8 slime per day, and a little less than one petrified slime per day, with my full slime hutch which would have made us around 1030 gold per day. They won't make a crazy amount of money, but they're kind of fun to mess with nonetheless. Part 8. The Fish Ponds Just like the slimes in the slime hutch, the fish in the fish ponds aren't quite like the other animals. The fish ponds are built by Robin, and each can house up to 10 fish. Once you have built one, you can just throw in the fish you want to raise inside the pond, as long as you don't try to raise any type of legendary fish. Every fish produces roe, and the more expensive the fish is, the more expensive their roe is going to be. You can process the roe you get using preserves jars, that double the value of the roe you put in. The one exception to that is the processed sturgeon roe, that becomes caviar, which is worth 500 gold when processed. Aside from the roll, each type of fish can also produce a set of items, which you can check in detail on the game's wiki. Just keep in mind that some of the better items have ridiculously small chances of being produced. The fish that produce the most valuable roll and the better items generally take longer to multiply and fill the ponds. But you can fill in the ponds using fish you caught yourself, meaning you don't need to wait for them to reproduce. Like I said, each fish pond has a limit on how many fish it can have at once. To increase that limit, your fish will request certain items from time to time, being that you can have up to 10 fish at once in a pond. The more fish you have in your ponds, the higher chances of getting better items is. Each species of fish will request a certain type of item, and you can check what those items are going to be in the game's wiki. Links in the description like always. Well, and that's about it. If you have any questions, feedback or topics that you'd like to see me cover, let me know in the comment section, because I read every comment in my videos. Thanks for watching!